everyone, it's Jim and Charles from Fowls and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 154, we're going to drop in and have a look at where Charles is at with the kit headphone amplifier. Doesn't it look good? <laughs> Version 2.0. But first everyone, caution. Electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. And before we get into the headphone app, um, we've got to talk about another one of our kits. Yeah, the 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 phono preamp. We 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 sent out emails um, to, to everybody that said they were interested in being a test builder. And, and uh, less than 24 hours later, how many did we sell of the? We sold kits? four out of five which is amazing. Um, so thanks a lot to everybody for your support. We still have one kit that we're actually going to box. It's just so much easier. We're trying to move the business to the point where uh, we're, we have a small production run so in which we make a, a lot of kits. So we'll do 10 in a row, for example, all at the same time. Yeah, so it'll make things a little bit more efficient. So there is a kit available. If you're interested in being a test builder, uh, it's in the store. Uh, it's it's actually in the store as a uh, silver cover, but if you wanted black covers, just let me know and we'll switch it over to black. I just didn't want to put two kits in the store and sell them and then we don't have another kit. So, <laughs> but anyways. And, and for everybody that's already purchased, uh, I'm looking at the boxes across on the other side of the room right now. We're packing them up and we'll have them to you as soon as possible. Yeah, I was thinking that we could make it to, for today, which is Friday. But uh, it's looking more and more like Monday, which means we're working on the weekend again. Well, it happens. It, it happens. So, but um, yeah, probably on Monday they'll go out, and uh, and then we'll have our you know our dining room table back. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, so this this is your um, your new uh, version 2.0 uh, prototype chassis. Yep. So this is what we built version 2 of the headphone amplifier on. Uh, for anybody that's stuck around since version 1, uh, you know that one was a little janky. It was a little hacked together. We, we built half of it on a chassis that we already had, and the other half was connected to it with some leads. So hey, You said we. Well, I did. Okay, I'm not going to put that on you. <laughs> <laughs> so for version 2, we wanted a platform that was going to be easier to work on, and this is what we ended up with. And this is basically our standard chassis platform, and we've lengthened it. I think four inches, is that about right? And we went from 12 to 16. Yeah. yeah. So four inches. And we added handles. I love handles. Whenever an amp chassis gets big enough to require handles, well, you got to have handles, right? And these are beautiful. I mean, I first used these handles on our power tube tester, our custom power tube tester. And it's almost the same size as this. Yeah, it just yeah. makes it easier to move around. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing about this is that we found a new uh, output transformer supplier, a good one this time, I hope. Mm -hmm. And um, the taps on it are, are good. I'm reading actually from a cheat sheet down here. So <laughs> he's got a 50 ohm tap. 150 ohm, 300 ohm, and 600 ohm, which is just about perfect. It covers pretty much any standard headphone. Uh, a very common output for our uh, headphones is 35 ohms. So 50 ohms is almost a perfect match. The, mm -hmm. the rule is you want to go from low, low impedance to higher impedance. So a, a slight step up is absolutely perfect. What you don't want to do is do it in reverse and have a, a 50 ohm impedance headphone and drop it into the input of the transformer at 35 ohms. Yeah. It would work, but it might not sound as good as it could and you'll have some you'll have some definite volume loss as a result of the inefficiencies. Mm -hmm. So so those are really good. So four, we've got an extra tap. That's right. There's five taps and the fifth tap is for eight ohms, which is really interesting to us because this is an integrated amplifier. Yes, it's a headphone amplifier, but by its very nature, it's an integrated, which means that it's got a preamp 
and it's and got a power stage. It's got a power stage, which means that it can take line level. It can take a digital music player, a streamer, mm -hmm. your phone. I don't recommend you use your phone, <laughs> but it can take a streamer. Uh, your computer can plug into it. So we could not resist putting some speaker taps on. Yes. Yeah. And plugging it into our main system. You know, we have fairly large sit, uh, speakers in our main listening room, but they're 93 dB efficient, about. And it's... It sounded really good. It Not, did. I wouldn't compare it to the GU50 or, or the URI and, and our, our Universal 6 or 12 SN7 preamp, but it was really good. It was easy to listen to. Um, and it's still a work in progress. And we, at about half volume, we were able to get up to an, our normal listening volume. Yeah, in, somewhere in a, around half a watt, really, was the power output at that point. Maybe not even a half a watt, maybe as little as a quarter of a watt. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, with, with reasonably efficient speakers, most people are listening to music um, below a watt. That's your, that's your RMS. You're normally going to be listening below a watt um, and if you have a you know a really big piece of music with big crescendos you and you have like a GU50 in place what's the GU50 output I forget 8.5 watts yeah I think that's what we're getting something like that you might you might crack two watts of output <laughs> you know so um, but um, and that's you know filling a fairly big room Obviously, you're not going to have that problem with uh, reasonably efficient headphones. No, we're, we're only going up to maybe a quarter volume on our most efficient ones here. So what we're envisioning is if this, if we can get the 8 ohm tap to, to work well with our speakers, if somebody has, you know, a very small living accommodation, which would explain why the focus is on headphones, that, I mean, that I think is what's driving the huge resurgence in headphones, mm -hmm. uh, headphone amps. Uh, so if you've got a small space or a real need to keep things fairly quiet most of the time. Shared living space, something like that. So you could have a very high quality uh, set of bookshelf speakers that you could occasionally just use your headphone app to drive. And because and you are in a small space, maybe you're listening in your office, at your desk, uh, in a small listening area. Um, you're going to be able to drive those little speakers right up to full listening volume easily. And then whenever you need to go really quiet, you can plug in your nice set of headphones and switch over to them. Talking about headphones, I think these, these Sennheisers, we, we have quite a selection of really good quality yeah, here, headphones. Let me pull a couple over here. I think the Sennheiser HD 660S is the, the, the sort of the tunnel balance, um, the efficiency, their um, 104 dB efficient. Um, I like these the best as a sort of a critical listening pair. The uh, magnetic planars that we have, they they sound absolutely amazing. But um, I, and we use them as sort of a review set of headphones. But I think the Sennheisers are sort of going to become sort of the center standard. We have some less expensive, some more expensive. Um, but I'm really liking how the Sennheiser sound. And I think it was probably one of the most recommended pairs of headphones whenever we made the call out before asking what people wanted us to try on it. So, mm -hmm. and I was lucky actually, these are quite expensive and I found, I found them for a good price. Uh, they I think they might've been a returned open box or something, but they were just perfect. So, mm -hmm. um, so sound wise though, you've now built two versions of version two, right? Yep. So really you're on 2.1 now, I Something think. Something like that, or yeah. Or 2.2. And, and I've made some changes to the circuit and... Technically it's actually performing better than the previous we're, version, We're right? getting more power out, but power isn't everything, especially after we're, what we were just talking about, about how much power we need for our headphones and to fill the room. And in order to get this power out, I think we actually lost a little bit in sound quality. Um, a little bit maybe on the top end, a little bit maybe on the bottom. Some and of the mid-range magic went away. Some of the mid-range magic went away. It still sounds really good, but I think it's a step backwards sound-wise. And, you know, we're going to play a bit of music here in a little bit, and you can have a listen and let us know what you think of it. And as I make improvements, we've got some other ideas about where to go with the design. 
I think before I think before everybody's watched the video, your secret plan for version 2.3 is going to be already in place. Oh, uh, maybe if I have enough time today. Well, that's right. It's Friday's an incredibly busy day. Not only do we have to film this, but we get a lot of orders in on a Friday. We've got orders going out. We have some amplifiers to ship. We uh, have parts to pick up. Oh my God, it's a busy day. <laughs> Lots and, to do. And somebody has to go get groceries. Yeah. Anyways. Why don't you let us know what you think? We're going to play one of our favorite test tracks, uh, Ain't No Sunshine. Sunshine when he's gone. It's not warm when he's away. Ain't no sunshine when he's gone, and he's always gone too long. Anytime he goes away. I wonder this time where he's gone Wonder how long he's gonna stay Ain't no sunshine when he's gone And this house just ain't no home Anytime he goes away Well, that was one of our favorite test tracks uh, to test mid-range. Um, a little bit of the guitar work really comes out nicely. Great for vocals, of course. Yeah, I mean, um, Ain't No Sunshine is um, it's just it's an iconic piece of music um, from a wonderful performer. And it, it shows you actually how good CD quality resolution can sound. It's probably at the limit of it. And goodness knows, higher resolution probably would sound better. Mm -hmm. But you're not you're not convinced that you've actually moved forward with this version of the the headphone amp, are you? Well, I'm I'm thinking the top end of the frequencies maybe sound just a little bit harsh, and I think we've lost a little bit out of the bottom end too at the same time. So so you went backwards. Yeah, I think this is a good example of how the development process works. Uh, we 
have a theory about something, we change something, and then we have a listen and see how it works. And of course, take some measurements and see how it's actually performing. Yeah, I mean, technically though, it's the amps performing su superior to we're, the previous we're version. getting a little bit more max power output on it. But I think if it's coming at the cost of sound quality, then uh, then we've got to go back. We have some other ideas to explore though. It's, it's a constant work in progress. Yeah, okay, well thanks for doing that. I think by the time everybody has watched this video, you probably will have tried the secret plan. <laughs> well, at least one other option on there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well you've got a daring plan as to what you want to try and maybe we'll talk about it if it's successful yeah okay well what came in this week well a whole bunch of 6550c true svetlanas that's the ones made in st petersburg watch for those rectangular plate holes yeah and i'm actually seeing more of the earlier version uh also made in st petersburg the 6550b's but if you do any research, you'll see that back in the day when they came out, they had a lot of, um, of, of issues with early tube failures. And that was actually the first, first 6550 that Svetlana made. They never made a 6550A. So that was their first foray into the market of them. Yeah, and there's probably a warehouse or two in uh, in the U.S. that are full of 6550Bs. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, I think somebody goes in there and tries to make a deal, brings out a couple of thousand tubes thinking they're going to get rich. You and can yeah, and, and you can spot those ones by round holes, and they all have a side as well as a top getter on them, so they're easy to pick out. Oh yeah, that's right, they're pretty weird. Anyways, we've got enough in of these to make up four match quads, and everybody loves these tubes, primarily because, uh, I mean, this is, I should backtrack a, a little tiny bit. This is a lower powered KT-88, um, but in amps like the R8 that aren't, uh, don't have the voltage capabilities of running a true KT88 um, at full spec or max power would be a better way of saying it. The 6550 is just a perfect tube. And where it really differs from the average KT88, which tends to be, it's a hard driving tube with good base. Um, but the mid-range is just really analytical. It's, it's very flat. It's not very exciting. And when you realize that 90% of all recorded music sits in the mid-range, you know what you want. <laughs> that's right. I mean, if you're a bass hound and you need that thumping all the time, and that's really what the focus of your system is, you're going to love any KT-88 you can get your hands on. But if you're a little bit more refined than that, <laughs> um, and really prize uh, mid-range performance as well as bass, you're going to love the sound of 6550 because they have a, just a touch more warmth in the mids than your average KT-88. And that's just enough to bring them over, you know, that line from a good tube to a really great sounding tube. Anyways, we've got some sets in the Wilsonton sets and we've got a couple of quads up on their own. Mm -hmm. And they are they were nice young looking tubes. So yeah, great looking. Yeah, uh, which is a fine because they're getting harder and harder to find. Well, if you stayed to the very end, here's some discount codes to help you out. And I'm still getting used to the new camera. <laughs> we've got flat rate uh, $20 shipping. Let's get you over in the middle. <laughs> uh, around around the world. And we can reach about 99% of you. And if your order is $150 or more after discount, the shipping's on us, folks. Stay safe, everyone. This is Jim. And Charles. Signing off. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>